Coming up on BG24 News, police are searching for an additional suspect in last week's armed robbery. We'll tell you who they've already arrested. Students' messages were heard in a silent protest last week. BG24's Danielle Griffith tells us what sparked their movement. And high school students from the area brought the game of life, well, to life. Plus your Black Swamp weather forecast. Welcome to your campus and community connection. Wood County's live local news starts right now. This is BG24 News, live at 5.30. Hello everyone, I'm Madeline Fenning. And I'm Dominique Hicks. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we have developing news. Madeline, Bowling Green Police are looking for one more suspect tied to last week's armed robbery. That's right, but they've made some progress. They've already arrested two BGSU students. Police believe Thomas James of Offenhauer Hall and Thomas Collet of Kreischer Hall were directly involved with the armed robbery. Major Tony Hetrick says they could face some jail time. It's a first degree fel felony offense of aggravated robbery. Um, there was a firearm involved, so they're looking at uh, multiple years in prison. Police arrested another student, Timothy Sewell, for drug trafficking. His connection to the robbery remains unclear. The robbery happened last Tuesday at an apartment on North Enterprise Street. Police say the suspects robbed two men at gunpoint. In campus news, BGSU police are looking for three suspects who allegedly assaulted a student. That student says three white males assaulted him at 1 a.m. on October 6. It happened in the parking lot E. That's along Thurston Street across from the student union. Crime Stoppers are offering a reward for information that leads to an arrest. That phone number is on our Facebook page. Racist remarks on Twitter sparked outrage both online and on campus. Reporter Danielle Griffith says hundreds of people took part in a protest. The popular social network Twitter.com has recently been used in a racial act against a Bowling Green student organization. An anonymous individual was attacking the Black Student Union online with false Black Student Union retweets. The Black Student Union's Twitter page being mentioned uh, and the tweets uh, that they mentioned us under were pretty racist, they were very harmful, um, and they were tweeted under an anonymous user, Pat Falcon. Now in response, Black Student Union President Kevin Lewis and other organizational members came together to decide the next step in a student-driven movement that will help prevent incidents such as the tweets from happening once again. The first initiative to this movement was a silent protest. Students gathered here at the Union Oval in a silent protest with tape around their mouths reading the words, Call to Action. The Black Student Union, Latino Student Union, Vision, World Student Association, and the Indian Association created a campaign called the Call to Action, where they'll make people culturally aware and put those words right into action. Students then marched here to McFall Center to meet with university administrators to find a solution to end racial discrimination here in Bowling Green. Though President Mary Ellen Maisie was absent from her office, during this time they still were able to voice their concerns to other university administrators. So we did get feedback from administration because there were a number of student affairs professionals, faculty, staff that actually came out to the silent protest and they had tape over their mouths or they had tape on their clothing and they actually sat with us in the Union Oval. Though Kevin says the investigation is close, the campaign call to action is still ongoing. Reporting for BG24 News. I'm Danielle Griffith. BG police have identified the source of the tweets. They say the Twitter user is not from the area. Police also say the tweets are protected as freedom of speech. On a lighter note, in campus news today, BGSU began upgrading its email system. The school says the interface is new, but it should work the same way. The upgrade is scheduled to continue over the next several days. Email service should be received as usual. Questions about the upgrade should be directed to the Technology Support Center at BGSU. Two new minors are coming to BGSU. Students will soon be able to minor in coaching and management. The Undergraduate Council recently proposed these new minors and the school gave the thumbs up. The coaching minor is aimed at education majors, while the management minor is aimed at non-business majors. BGSU says the minors will be available next fall. Well, Paul, it seems to be a little chilly outside today. Exactly, but we're all cooped up here inside. So tell us, what's it like outside now? Well, Madeline and Dominique, 
As of right now, the temperature is 60 degrees with pretty cloudy skies, and the wind is about 10 miles per hour. You may need your umbrella tonight because we have an 80% chance of rain. We will have more of your Black Swamp weather forecast in a bit. Thank you, Paul. Coming up next, reporter Claudia Cyber asks if college is really worth it. The Stroh Center was packed this weekend for a highly anticipated homecoming concert. Find out what students thought of the performances. Welcome back. You know, after high school, many students head to college to prepare for their future careers. But a new skilled labor program questions the importance of a college degree. Reporter Claudia Cyber asks, is college worth it? A Good Jobs initiative is launching in Wood County. The city of Bowling Green is encouraging more students to pursue skilled jobs instead of traditional four-year degrees. Economic reports indicate that more than half of skilled trade workers in the U.S. are in their late 40s and up. This means older skilled workers are retiring and need someone to take their place. Officials say there are plenty of skilled jobs available, but not enough young people to fill them. This has many asking, is a four-year degree necessary? Freshman Tess Losey says that her decision to major in communication disorders was a personal one. Um, my dad was sick with Huntington's and I had to communicate with him when he was sick so it just made me realize that I can help other people communicate. She also says that deciding to go to a four-year college depends on the type of person you are. People are like more hands-on so like where I went to school there was like Fort County and Fort County was more of a hands-on school so like in that Fort County helped um, these kids like get into the job or the workforce right after high school. Sophomore Chad Rex agrees. I mean it just depends where your background is like I mean I, I'm gonna be in debt but I decided to come here and be in debt and then work it off. However BGSU professor Nicole Califf Hughes says college can be for everyone. I think if you have a passion for something coming in and you take classes in it and it's everything you thought it would be and more, then stick with what you love. If you're not sure, come in undecided and see what strikes your fancy. I think that no matter what you major in, the skills that you get in terms of critical thinking and research and the experience can benefit everyone. She also says that getting a four-year degree is very important. I think that what you get out of it is beyond just the piece of paper. Though some see the value in a four-year degree, U.S. college enrollment has dropped by about 500,000 students. Reporting for yep, BG24 thanks. News, I'm Claudia Seibert. Now, despite job openings in skilled labor jobs, 7% of Wood County is out of work. Nearly 5,000 BGSU students and fans packed the Stro on Sunday night to see Florida Georgia Line perform. University Activities Organization sponsored the event, but it was more than just a concert for many. Some students said the band created a bonding experience for the crowd. I was so excited about it. I think it's great for the school. It probably brings in a lot of money and really I think it boosts like the um, the school in general, like it, it'll bring in more freshmen, I think, and brings the school together. Tonight was awesome. Like I could just like feel the energy of the crowd. Like everybody was, it was so loud. Everybody was screaming. Everyone I know was trying to get tickets for it. So it's definitely something that really helps people have a lot of fun on campus. UAO says an overwhelming number of students wanted a country band to visit BG. That's what brought Fl Florida Georgia Line to the Strow. Author Devin Powers is visiting BGSU today. She will discuss the influence music critics have on today's pop culture. Powers says music has a meaning and emotion. She will speak on how critics shape the 60s culture and how it translates to how we view pop culture today. Powers used Miley Cyrus's performance at the VMAs as an example. It's about how did we get to a point where Miley Cyrus occupied our cultural conversation for a week at a moment where the United States was contemplating going to war. Like, that seems huge to me. Power's speech is taking place in the Union Theater until 6.30. Kids will be flocking the streets soon for Halloween, and we have a list of some specific trick-or-treating times. Downtown Bowling Green businesses will be passing out candy from 4 to 6 on October 24th, and the city's trick-or-treat time is 6.30 to 8 on October 31st. Check out the full list of Northwest Ohio Times on our Facebook page.
Coming up, we may be close to the end of the government shutdown. We have the latest developments. Plus, fall weather is on its way. Your Black Swan weather forecast is after the break. Now, Wood County's live local forecast with BG24 Black Swamp Weather. Hello, I'm Paul Mims and here's your Black Swamp weather forecast. Currently, we are at 60 degrees with cloudy skies, winds at 8 miles per hour, typical October weather for the fall. Tonight's forecast, we have a low of 57, some likely showers and thunderstorms, so expect that with 80% chance. Winds coming at you from, the t from 10 to 20 miles per hour at the south-southwest. Tomorrow's forecast, we have a high of 63, mostly sunny skies, winds at 15 to 25 miles per hour at the west southwest and tomorrow night we have a low of 45 with partly cloudy skies winds to 10 to 15 miles per hour from the west coming at you here we have our regional temperatures here at 60 degrees around the bowling green and perrysburg area over here in the sandusky area we have a high of 63 and down in finley there's a low of 59 for regional radar we have you can see there's a little bit of precipitation coming our way you're going to see that tonight with showers and thunderstorms and in the na national weather you see there is precipitation coming from the west and southwest so do expect that tonight and for a five-day forecast you see we have wednesday high 63 with a low of 45. thursday we have partly cloudy skies with some sun at high 59 low of 40. Friday, partly cloudy skies as well with a high of 64, low of 43. Saturday, we're going to see some rain showers with a high of 57, low of 36. Pretty cool there. And Sunday, you're going to have the sun again with partly cloudy skies at high 56 and low of 36. Wow, looks great. I know that we've been going up and down, bouncing back and right. forth between like yes. late summer weather and fall weather. Yes. So do you think that it's it's here to stay or are we going to jump back to the 70s soon? By the looks of the weather for this week, it looks like fall is here to stay. It's pretty cool, much cooler than last week. Wonderful. Great. Thanks so much, Paul. No problem. A 121-year-old building in downtown Toledo will be torn down. The Toledo Mud Hens are the ones doing the demolition. City officials voted unanimously to let the building come down. Toledo will redevelop the building for residential and commercial use. The battle continues to clean Lake Erie. The Ohio Environmental Protection Agency wants to set limits on the pollution in streams. That pollution comes from chemicals and farm fertilizers, manure and sewage. The EPA says the pollution feeds toxic algae into Lake Erie and other lakes in the state. The algae can kill animals and make people sick. The city of Toledo also is working on projects to clean the lake. Breaking right now, the House of Representatives will vote tonight to reopen the government. That's according to a, so a spokesperson excuse me, for House Speaker John Boehner. This deal will end the shutdown and raise the federal debt limit. It will keep the government operating until December and allow the Treasury to borrow money until February. The deadline for increasing the debt limit is this Thursday. If no deal is made by then, experts say interest rates could rise dramatically. Well, students were on fall break this past weekend, but football team was still back in action. Jackie, what do you have for us? Well, the Falcon football team traveled down to Mississippi, where the Falcons able to continue their winning streak. Stay tuned to see right here on BG24 Sports. It's unfalcon believable coverage that you won't get anywhere else. This is BG24 Sports. Welcome back to BG24 Sports. I'm Jackie Elliott. The Bowling Green State University football team traveled to Mississippi State on Saturday. The Falcons went into the game on a four-game win streak, while the Bulldogs looked to bounce back from a loss from LSU. The Bulldogs opened the game with a 75-yard drive for a touchdown, but the Falcons scored on a 76-yard drive on their own in the third quarter. But Mississippi State hung on to win 21-20, and BGSU is now 5-2 on the season. The men's ice hockey team traveled to New York on Saturday. The Falcons took on 16-ranked Union College. This was the second game of the series to open the season. Union College scored back-to-back -back power plays in the second and pulled away on a 5-3 win. BGSU converted on just one of five power play opportunities. The Falcons are now 0-1 with one tie on the season. 
Moving on to soccer, the BGSU men's team hosted the Northern Illinois Huskies. Moving straight to the second half, the Falcons had a shot at a penalty kick, but senior Anthony Grant was unable to make the goal. Late in the second half, senior Anthony Grant scored the only goal of the game, leading the Falcons to a 1-0 victory. Grant's goal was BGSU's first goal against the Huskies in nearly six years. With this victory, the Falcons improved to 3-5 with four ties overall and 2-1 and with no ties in the MAC. The BGSU volleyball team has some great MAC matchups this weekend. The Falcons faced the Buffalo Bills Friday in a hard-fought match. The Falcons pulled out the win in five sets with a 3-2 victory. On Saturday, the Akron Zips came to the Stroh. The Falcons needed just three sets to win, 25-19, 25-19, and 25-16. The Falcons will improve to 8-9 overall and 5-1 and in the MAC. We have a few games taking place this week. Tonight, the hockey team takes the ice against the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is the first home game of the regular season, and the puck drops at 7:07. The volleyball team is traveling to Michigan to take on Oakland. The Falcons are hot. They have won six of their last seven matches. And then tomorrow, the men's soccer team hosts Cleveland State. Action begins at Cochran Field at 7 p.m. We will have all the coverage of those games Thursday night. And let's take a quick look at some professional sports. Right now, the Boston Red Sox are up in Detroit taking on the Tigers in Game 3 of the American League Championship Series. The Tigers took Game 1 with a 1-0 victory. The Tigers were winning in Game 2 with a 5-0 lead at the top of the 6th, but the game went downhill when Big, Big, Big Poppy hit a grand slam to tie the game in the 8th. The Red Sox took the win with a 6-5 victory. With the series tied at 1, both teams are hungry for the win tonight. Right now, it's 0-0 in the bottom of the 5th. That's all I have for you today. I'm Jackie Elliott, and we'll be right back. So, Dominique, go to college or start a career? Well, Madeline, hundreds of high school students answered that question for fun today. They played in the game of life in the student union. Students from Northwest Ohio took part in a live action game based on the board game. They were able to pick careers, pay taxes, and face many other scenarios based on the game. It was part of Finances 101, a program to teach high school students professional, excuse me, financial education before graduation. Let's get our last look at our Black Swamp weather forecast. Paul, what's the rest of the week looking like? Well, for the rest of the week, you can see there's going to be some pretty cool temperatures, much cooler than last week. With Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, we're going to have some sun with some clouds Thursday and Friday. But it's going to be pretty moderate temperatures. Saturday, you're going to see some showers, but you're going to have, it goes down to 36 on Saturday with very cool nights and Sunday as well. But you're going to have some sun Sunday as well, so that'll be good. Very nice. Cool. Well, I mean, all I'm saying is that if we were to be, have been involved in that game of life, what do you think that you guys would have done? I really do not know. Choosing career or college? I don't think that anybody just right out of high school is able to just know right off the bat. What about you, Paul? I certainly didn't. It took some time with my first year to understand, so. Well, you know, I'd definitely be doing what I'm doing now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all for VG24 News tonight. Check out these stories and more online at BG24news.org. And on social media at Facebook.com slash BG24news. Plus, you can tweet us at Twitter.com slash BG24news. Have a great night, everyone.